Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning service. Don't worry, don't worry, there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the service this morning. Let's just close our eyes and let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that we can be together as family in Christ once again. Lord, thank you already for what you're going to do during this service. And Lord, we... We just pray, Lord, come and do whatever you want to do during this service. Lord, this service belongs to you. And as we're going to go into worship soon, Lord, just come and captivate our minds. And Lord, may we really worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. Lord, thank you for your love, mercy, and thank you just for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a yes, amen. Lord, thank you for moments like this where we can just experience a glimpse of heaven. Lord, thank you for every single breakthrough this morning. Thank you that we can just come as we are. Lord, you know our deepest heart's desires. And Lord, this morning I pray Lord, that you will once again break our hearts for what breaks yours. Lord, we pray just more of you, less of us this morning. Lord, we come and we declare this morning, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you. Jesus, you are our everything. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. Without you, we cannot do anything. Yes, Lord. Just for a moment, just, just, just talk to God. Just, just pray. Um, if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Um, yeah, just, just talk to Him. I don't know, <laughs> just speak to him. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Just for a moment, just soak in his presence. Now there's a piece of scripture that says that it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's his anointing that breaks it. And you know, my prayer for you this morning is that you will be so full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that whenever the enemy tries to come and get a grip on you, man, that you will be so anointed that it won't get a place to grip. Let it just slip off because of his anointing. And this morning I want to encourage you, you know what, the yoke that you are carrying, um, stop carrying it. Take his yoke. It's light. It's easy. The yokes that we try to carry, it's those yokes that get broken through the anointing, through the Holy Spirit. I feel we're, we're not done yet. Um, and if you guys can stay on stage, um, as, I, as I'm going to minister, I'm just going to... I'm just going to minister from a total different piece of scripture. 
this morning than what I had planned. So guys, you don't even have to put on the slides there. We're busy with our series, Closer, Deeper, Wider. And as you go deeper, you know, the amazing thing is when you go swimming in the ocean or even in a pool, there's a point where you get into the pool, the water is there. You go a little bit deeper, it's there. But you don't need to depend on anyone. You can stand, you're okay. A little bit deeper, you're there. Yeah, I can, I'm still okay. I can depend on my own abilities, my own talents, my own stuff. Then all of a sudden, you get this deep in the pool. Now, now it starts to get pretty crazy. Now I start to do a little hop just to take a breath every now and then. But you know, there's a time when you go so deep, where you're totally immersed underwater, where you get dependent on someone to assist you. You can't stay there for a very long time. And you know, in the spirit, that's exactly the same. When you go deeper, man, the deeper you go in Christ, the, 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 the better that relationship gets with Christ, the more dependent you become on him. Because he starts to challenge you with things and you're like, well, how am I gonna do this? Well, it's not you that should do it. It's, it's God that needs to work through you. And it's God that needs to uh, allow you to, to do that, not through your strength, but through God's strength. And you know, <laughs> Psalm 23, it's such an awesome piece of scripture and many of us know Psalms 23 by heart. And, and, and it's amazing, the Lord is my shepherd and, and it's got these beautiful promises in it. And there's a certain part in Psalms 23 where God speaks about this table that is preparing for you in front of your enemies. A, a table that is setting for you and at that table that he is setting for you, when you go and s just sit at a table, that's the moment when you say, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm sitting at a table that you prepared for me now. I'm enjoying the feast that you have for me. And he's busy sorting the stuff out while you are sitting at a table that he has set for you. But you know, to go deeper, man, so many times life happens and then we, then we get so thrown into life that we forget about the table that God has set for us. We, we're inviting you to, to just come and sit and enjoy all the promises that I have for you. All the, all, all the promises that's, that's in the word. And you know, it's so amazing. We, we, we spoke about um, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 where it says, um, I know the plans I have for you. It's plans to prosper, not to harm you. And usually we stop right there. But just after that, in verse 12, it says, call upon the Lord and he will hear you. Now, when you think about call, then it's like you get different calls. You get different sounds of calling. I mean, my, my son, I know my son's call when he's in trouble, I know it's like, daddy, it's like, ah, oh, something's happening. And immediately I'm like up and I'm like, what's happening? What's going on? Is he in danger? And you know, God is exactly the same. He hears your call and he acts on the call. Sometimes it's, it's a happy call. Sometimes it's like, daddy, daddy, uh, I want to show you something. I want to show you something that happened. I'm going to tell you about an achievement. And God knows your call this morning. But you know, so many times in life we go and we prepare our own tables in life. And we set our own tables so many times. And you know, what's so amazing for me about Jesus is, well, a sad part 
And then an amazing part. Now the sad part is that Christianity, between brackets, paints this picture about Jesus. This Jesus sitting with a little lamb, clothed in white, soft. And then we read a Bible and then we see, okay, whoa, there was this one instance when he went to the temple and as he went into the, into the, the, the gates of the temple, you saw what they were doing to the house of the Lord. And he started turning tables. He took out the whip and started whipping. He was anguished. He had compassion and an anguish. I love that English word, anguish. Because you know, anguish talks about, it's not just a heartbreak or a, um, anger. It is kind of the two melted together, this anguish, cry for, man, what are you doing to my father's house? And you see, here's the thing. We are the temple of, of the Holy Spirit, right? So the temple is in, the, um, we are the temple, the Holy Spirit is inside of us. What are we putting in? We say we want to get close to God. We want to grow closer. We want to go deeper in the spirit. Man, this, this is amazing to have, ex, to have moments like this where we can just soak in his presence, where we can just take it in. And you know, in our lives so many times then we come and we start preparing a table in our lives, um, anger, That looks too much like an N, but it's an R. Anger. Every little thing we get angry about. Let's see what else is here. Jealousy. Jealousy. Um, fakeness. We become so fake that we don't even know who we are anymore. Gossiping. Gossiping. You know, when someone comes to you and say, I don't want to gossip, but stop that person immediately. It's going to be gossip. And so many times we listen to it, or we come many times, sorry if I'm going to step on toes now, and we say, um, Pastor, I just want you to pray for this and this person, um, and then it's the whole pedigree. You know, you don't need to explain in detail, just say, I need you to pray for this person regarding this matter. Because at one point, many times it turns into gossip. Or we go and tell everybody about it. Addiction. 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 What is this one? Ah, oh, lust. And it's probably a thousand more stuff that we can write down there of tables that we prepare in our lives. And you know, this morning, and this is the reason why, why I asked the band still to remain. This morning, maybe at one point in your life, you stood up from the table that God prepares for you. A table where you can just go into his rest, where you can just enjoy him and forget about what's happening. At one point, maybe you got up. And maybe this morning you're saying, I'm sitting, I'm sitting at this table this morning. There's an addiction in my life that I just can't get rid of. Well, you see, the thing is you 
can't get rid of an addiction, but God can. With God, it can. Jealousy. Jealous about what another person has. Maybe you're jealous of the way that God is using another believer. You know, that's also jealousy. Lust, what goes into the eyes, finds a place in the heart. And believe me, it comes out at one time. Fakeness. I think I spoke about it a week or two back. Don't be fake, just be you. Um, God loves you for who you are. Gossiping. Anger. Maybe today you're sitting at a table with one of these things. Maybe there's something else that the Holy Spirit reveals to you. You know, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You've got a Holy Spirit inside. And you know, I think so many times Jesus has an anguish over us. And my biggest prayer is that you will have a desire to go deeper, deeper, closer and deeper. Closer and deeper goes together. As you go closer, you go deeper with God. And you know, it's a choice. It's absolutely your choice how deep you want to go. It's absolutely your choice how deep you're going to go in a worship session. It's your choice how much of Him you want to experience in your life. And yes, sometimes some of these things keep us away from experiencing Him. Anger, fear, sometimes fear. We can't help to have fear sometimes. Well, the moment you realize this fear in your life, man, chase that thing away. It's not of God. Chase it away. And you know, I think so many times when Jesus comes and takes a look in our lives, you know what I pray? That this morning you will make a choice to go and look in your life and look at a table that are set, that's set in your life. Maybe there's nothing. Oh, praise the Lord, man. That's, that's awesome. But maybe the table is just set with one thing. But man, that you will start having an anguish over your own life. And that you will go and that you will actually <laughs> turn a tables around and turn tables over in your own life. And start taking out the whip and rebuking the stuff that's not of God in your life. If you say you want to go closer, get rid of that. Start turning tables in your life. If, you, if you're serious about, sorry guys, please, I want you to understand my heart. My heart is to see you grow so close to God. My heart is to see you as an individual do what we read in the Bible. And one of the things that's, that, that, that's really that makes me very sad over all the, the, the world today. So the word tells us that these things will follow you if you believe. It talks about signs and wonders. It talks about healing. It, it talks about the Holy Spirit. Man, the same Holy Spirit that was poured out in Acts 2 is still alive and kicking today. Still moving. Still healing. Still bringing the dead to life where the enemy came to steal. It's the exact same Holy Spirit. Nothing changed. Times changed, but it's the same God, same Spirit. So my heart is to see you grow in Christ closer, closer, deeper, deeper, deeper with Him. So basically,